the next question from the sister in the rear. Assalamu alaikum, sir. My name is Rashmi Singh. I want you to say that I have accepted Islam from my heart. But I want to say that you have to read me. Sister said that she wants to accept Islam and she wants me to make her read the Shada. Do you understand English, sister? Yes. Do you believe there's one God? Yes. Do you believe that idol worship is wrong? Yes. Do you believe that Prophet Muhammad is the final messenger of God? Yes. Is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? No. Is there any economic pressure? No. Is there any physical pressure? No. Are you accepting with your free will? Yes. Yes, sister. So I will inshallah recite the Kalma in Arabic and you can repeat it. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa rasuluhu. Wa rasuluhu. I bear witness. I bear witness. That. That. There is no God. There is no God. But Allah. But Allah. And Prophet Muhammad. And Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. Peace be upon him. Is his servant and messenger. Is his servant and messenger. MashaAllah, sister. Now you are a Muslim, and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may He guide you and may He keep you on the straight path, as Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al Imran, chapter 3, verse number 8. Rabbana la tulzi qulubana baadis hadaytana wa hablana min ladun karhema inna kantal wahab. That, O oh Lord, please keep us on the straight path after Thou hast guided us and keep us on the straight path. So I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may He give you more hidayah to keep you in the straight path and may He grant you Jannah. So, I want to ask you one question. Sir, if my parents know about my parents, then how can I like, understand how I do what I'm doing is right? Sister, I have a question that if the parents come to know at home, Sister, I have a question that if the parents come to know at home, how will she convince the parents that what she's doing is the truth? Sister, first thing is that you start loving your parents more, number one. Start loving your mother and father more, obey them, respect them. Follow them unless if they tell you something against Allah and His Rasul, that's the only time you disobey. There should be a difference between what you were before and what you are now. Maybe you never used to follow many of the advice. Now, as long as what they say doesn't go against Quran and say Hadith, my request to you is even if you don't like it, you start following. They should see a difference. This is my daughter before she was a Muslim, and now this is my daughter after she accepted Islam. If they find a change in you, they will start asking you, Are, yesterday you weren't following me, now you're following everything what I'm saying. Immediately. Why? This is what the Quran says. This is what our beloved Prophet said, that paradise lies beneath the feet of your mother. In this way, you try and win them over. The Quran says in Surah Futila, chapter number 41, verse number 34, that it is better to win over them and it can be done with hikmah. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 125, Invite all to the way of thy Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching and argue with them and reason with them in ways that are best and most gracious. I would request you to give my DVD similarities between Islam and Hinduism to your parents and inshallah it will soften their heart and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he give hidayah to your parents also and to your family members. Thank you sir. Yes brother. Mic number one in the front. Dr. Jakir Naik sir, I call you to Namaste from the heart. My name is Eshu Das. So my question is this way that Islam कितनी शादी करने का इजाजत देता है और क्यों? Brother, the question that how many marriages are permitted in Islam and why? Referring to the polygamy. मतलब मैं जानना चाहता हूँ कि कुरान के अनुसार में सही में कितना होना चाहिए और कितना नहीं होना चाहिए? According to the Quran, how many marriages can you do? As far as the woman is concerned, according to Surah Nisa, chapter number four, verse number twenty to twenty-four. A married woman cannot marry again, so women should have only one husband maximum. As far as the other is concerned, 
Quran says in Surah Nisa chapter number 4 verse number 3 marry women for choice in twos threes or fours but if you can't do justice marry only one you can marry two three or four but if you can't do justice marry only one this statement marry only one if you can't do justice is only given in the Quran there's no other scripture on the face of the earth which says marry only one besides the Quran if you read the Ramayana if you read the Mahabharat you can marry as many wives as you want if you read Ramayana the father of Ram how many wives he had? He had more than one wife. Krishna, if you read Mahabharat, how many wives he had? Two, four, ten, thousand, ten thousand, sixteen thousand one hundred and eight wives. So when Krishna can have sixteen thousand one hundred and eight wives, so why can't we Muslims have up to four? If you read the Bible, in the Old Testament as the New Testament, you can marry as many wives as you wish. Solomon had 700 wives. Abraham had three wives according to the Bible. It is the church which put up a limit. Christians should marry only one. It is Rabbi Ben Shimgan Hauda who passed a synod that Jews should marry only one. In India, it is the Indian Penal Code in 1954 which passed a law in Hindu Marriage Act which said that Hindus should marry only one. It is the Indian Penal Code, not the Hindu scripture, which says that Hindus should have only one wife. Let's analyze what are the reasons that Islam gives permission for a man to have more than one wife. Marrying more than one wife is not compulsory in Islam, it's optional. But if you marry more than one wife, you should do justice between your wives. The logical reasons we can think that Islam has given permission are that male and female are born in equal proportion. But if you ask any medical doctor, any pediatrician, he will tell you that the girl, the female child, is the stronger sex medically as compared to the male child. She can fight the germs and diseases much better than a male child. So more female children are alive as compared to male children. As life goes on, there is death due to war, due to accident, due to cigarette smoking, due to alcohol. In all these cases, more male are dying as compared to female. So today in the world, there are more females in the world as compared to males. In few third world countries like India, etc., where the female population is less than the male population because of female infanticide and female feticide. Every year in India, more than one million fetuses are being aborted after they identified that they are females. If this evil practice stops, even in India, the male population will become less than the female population. In New York alone, there is one million female more than males. In USA alone, there are 7.8 million female more than males. In UK alone, there are 4 million female more than males. In Germany alone, there are 5 million female more than males. In Russia alone, there are 9 million female more than males. And God alone knows how many millions of females are more than males throughout the world. If I agree with you that one man should only marry one woman, and suppose the market is saturated, and if your sister happens to live in America, or my sister happens to live in America, and if she happens to be one of the 7.8 million females who has not found a life partner, the only option for her is that she either marries a man who already has a wife, or she becomes public property. Public property, such a harsh word. This is the most sophisticated word I can use. I cannot think of a better word than this. And any modest woman would say that if the option is given, she would prefer marrying a man who already has a wife than become public property. Hope that answers the question. We will not allow any further questions. But the volunteers are pointing out someone. This was the last question, actually, but we will allow that Shada. And inshallah, we will carry on with the other program. Do you believe there is one God? Brother? In the first place, do you believe there is one God? Kya mante khudai ke? Hello, ma. Salaam alaikum. Do you believe there is one God? Kya mante ke khudai ke? Ek ek garde karke ek en rakta hu. Aap mante ke Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam akhri pay kambar hai? Ha, manta hu. Aap mante? Manta. Aap pe koi zabar dasti kar raha Islam kabul karne ke liye? Koi aap pe zabar dasti kar raha hai? Nahi. आप अपने मर्जी से कबूल करना चाहते हैं। हाँ, मर्जी से कबूल करना चाहते हैं। ओके, इंशाल्लाह। Both the brothers, इंशाल्लाह, they can say the shahada I'll just say in Arabic, and you can repeat it, and then we can have the next session. Ashhadu, Ashhadu, Allah, Allah, Ilaha, Ilaha, Illa Allah, Illa Allah, Wa Ashhadu, Wa Ashhadu, Anna, Anna, Muhammadan, Muhammadan, Abduhu, Abduhu, Wa Rasuluhu, Wa Rasulu। मैं गवाही देता हूँ। मैं गवाही देता हूँ। के, के, Allah, Allah, के इलावा इलावा कोई माबूद नहीं कोई माबूद नहीं और और मोहम्मद मोहम्मद सल्लल्लाह सल्लल्लाह अलैहि वसल्लम अलैहि वसल्लम उसके बंदे 
اس کے بند ہے اور پیغمبر ہے اور پیغمبر ہے ماشاءاللہ آپ مسلمان ہو چکے ہیں اللہ آپ کو جزائے خیر دے اور اللہ آپ کو ہدایت دے اور میں دعا کروں گا کہ اللہ آپ کو جنت نصیب فرمائے and this ends the session and I give it to my brother to انشاءاللہ continue with the next session میرا ایک نام رکھ دیا ہے آپ اپنا نام عمر رکھ سکتے ہیں عمر Spirit of Islam every Monday at 5 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 6 p.m. UAE on Peace TV. Don't we all love to hear stories, stories that inspire us, give us morale and hope and courage, and make us better human beings? And what better stories to hear and ponder over than the stories of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where he was born, how he lived, what he did, what were the miracles that were given to him. Join me, Yasir Qadi, on a series of episodes where we discuss the biography of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Join Yasir Qadi in Sira of the Prophet, peace be upon him, every Saturday at 10.30 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 11.30 p.m. UAE on Peace TV. A friendly message by Dr. Zakir. The most profitable business. Would you like to know the business in which you earn the maximum profit? The secret is given in the Gurdjie's Quran. In Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 261. The example of those who spend their wealth in the way of Allah is like a seed of grain, which grows seven spikes. In each spike is a hundred grains. And Allah multiplies his reward to whom he wills. If you spend your wealth in the way of Allah, you'll get a return of 700 times. In business terminology, you'll get a profit of 70,000%. Is there any business you know of in which you'll get a better return? Invest today in the way of Allah. Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Our step. The responsibility of teaching your children is yours. Our concern. And help them to change their lives. Our approach. The Muslims can get uh, seduced by the non-Muslim world. The best gift a mother can give to the baby is the breast milk. Remedy for different issues. And I'm your host, Uthman Barry. We'd like to welcome you to the program Raising Children. Get ready to know the real and valid solutions to your problems in raising children. Next on Peace TV. Jazakallah khair. It was a wonderful session. Inshallah, we'll have the dua, but before that, a very short session. We have most of our distinguished guests and distinguished speakers who have come from various countries present here, I request them to kindly come on stage before Sheikh Salah al budair would present his dua. May I request, I'll call out the names, but I would request you before your name is called out, kindly move up. All the distinguished speakers who have been officially invited by us, kindly move on to the stage and form a semicircle along with uh, Brother Zakir. I'll just repeat the names. Brother Sheikh Abdul Rahim Green of UK. I request all the speakers without a name being called, please come on the stage, please. All the speakers, all the 30 speakers who have spoken for 10 days. Brother Abdul Rahim Green, UK, Yasir Fazaga, USA, Sheikh Yasir Qadi, USA, Sheikh Hosseini, Malaysia, Sheikh Salim Al Amri, UAE, Sheikh Saeed Ragi of Somalia, Sheikh Asim Al Hakim, Saudi Arabia, Sheikh Yusuf Estes, USA, Dr. Jafar Idris, Sudan, Brother Yusuf Idris, Sudan, Dr. Zaglul Al Najjar, Egypt. Sheikh Abdul Rahim McCarthy, USA, Sheikh Yahya Ibrahim, Australia, Sheikh Abdul Bari Yahya, USA, Sheikh Haitham Al Haddad, UK, Brother James Yee from USA, 
Sheikh Arib Islam, South Africa, Sheikh Jimmy Jones, USA, Dr. Ahmad Ibn Saifuddin, Saudi Arabia, Mr. Iqbal Sakrani, UK, and of course from India we have Farik Naik, Dr. Shweb Sayyid, Brother Nisar Nadia Dwala, Brother Atar Khan, and lastly, Dr. Zakir Naik. All on stage before you, let us give them a big ovation, recognition for all they have been doing for the last 10 days. They have been busy, not only on this ground and in the AC auditorium before you, but in television talks which they have been recording all along. I would request the honored guests from abroad and India who are with us here to kindly stand on the sides of the speakers as they speak to give them encouragement and give them a warm, hearty send off. Before this last session, I request with the Bandar al Raji, Saudi Arabia, Mana Joseph, Saudi Arabia, Muhammad Nasser al Mozarri, Oman, Yusuf Muhammad Najabi, uh, UAE, and the others from UAE, Ibrahim Fayyaz al Shamsi, Hassan Muhammad al Rahman. I request Brother Salman Fazlur Rahman from Bangladesh, Shayan Fazlur Rahman from Bangladesh. I would request, in fact, all the others who have been invited by us as the honored guests to kindly come up on the stage without me actually spending more time with the audience calling you up. Please, I would request especially we have the ambassador of Saudi Arabia to India, Ambassador Extraordinary, Sheikh Faisal bin Hassan Tarad amongst us, I request him to kindly move up on the stage along with Brother Abdul Monem Al Mahmoud, the Vice Consul General of Saudi Arabia, to kindly come on stage and let us hear the speakers present the concluding remarks, after which we would have dua by Sheikh Salah Al Budair. I would request Sheikh Ali Al Abbasi to also come up on stage. May I request the others who have also been part of our program, the Nasheed artist, Brother Abdullah Role of UK, and all the Qaris to kindly come up on stage. Sheikh Salah al Bukhatir from UAE, Sheikh Abdul Fattah al Taruti from Egypt, Sheikh Al Sayyid Ibrahim Muhammad from Egypt, and the others. Please forgive me if I missed out any of our honored guests. Kindly come up on stage so we can start the session right away. We have a short time. I'd request our distinguished speakers to present their brief concluding remark in approximately a minute or so, so that we give all the speakers a chance to present their remark. We start with the same list in my hand. Brother Abdul Rahim Green from UK would request you to come on mic. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Um, brothers and sisters, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you so much uh, for turning up, coming to this peace conference, and for giving us a, such a beautiful, warm reception here in India, in this mashallah, very warm country, alhamdulillah. It's been a real pleasure spending these days here. Alhamdulillah. It's been a real pleasure spending these days here in India in this fantastic conference. It is really something for the whole of India to feel proud about. This fantastic conference uh, organized by these fantastic people here. May Allah bless all the volunteers, all the helpers, all the workers, and of course, Dr. Zakir Naik. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi Dr. Jafar Idris. From Sudan. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised for those who make jihad for his sake. Make jihad means strive, strive for his sake. Then he will certainly guide them to his ways. This means that anyone who believes in the Creator whether he is a Muslim or a non-Muslim, if he turns to that Creator and sincerely asks him to guide him to the right path, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised that he will do so. Sheikh Yasser Fazaga from USA, California. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the name of Allah, the compassionate, the most merciful, all praise is due to Allah. And may his peace and blessings be upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The theme of this conference has always been regarding peace, revolving around the concept of peace. Please, let's all establish peace in our hearts by having a proper relationship with our Creator. And let's start in peace by making sure that we have peace in our families. 
To the people of India, you should be very proud of this conference. This is the biggest conference in the world, in the Muslim world today. And for this, say congratulations. May Allah bless you. May Allah bless all your efforts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh Yasser Qadi from USA. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. آپ لوگوں میں سے بہت زیادہ لوگ نے مجھ سے درخواست کیا کہ میں آپ کو اردو زبان میں خطاب کروں میں ذرا شرماتا ہوں چونکہ اردو میری مادری زبان نہیں ہے ماں کی زبان ہوگی لیکن مادری زبان نہیں ہے اور دوسری بات ہے یہ کانفرنس تو انگریزی میں کیا جاری ہے تو اس لیے اردو مناسب نہیں ہے لیکن انشاءاللہ میں اللہ تعالیٰ سے دعا کرتا ہوں تمنا رکھتا ہوں کہ ایک دن انشاءاللہ میں پھر سے آؤں گا اور آپ کو پورا ایک لیکچور اردو میں ہی دوں گا جو میسیج میں چھوڑ and that is worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and do that worship based upon the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that is the message of our religion and that is the message of the kalima la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah may Allah azza wa jal unite us all upon this kalima and bless all the organizers and volunteers of this conference wa jazakumullahu khair wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Sheikh Hussein Yee from Malaysia السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. الحمد لله. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم remind us رجلان تحب في الله اجتماعا عليه وتفرق عليه. If the Muslim meet for the sake of Allah and they are going to depart for the sake of Allah, then Allah will give us the shade in يوم القيامة. On the behalf of me and my people. We wish to thank all the organizing committees, especially to Dr. Zakhar Knight, who have conducted this 10 days conference that will enrich us with the knowledge of Islam. We would like to pray, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all our sin, inshallah. Amen. And also, may Allah strengthen our iman. And we love you for the sake of Allah. What are you going to say? You must say that we love you too for the sake of Allah. I say it again. We love you for the sake of Allah. May Allah bless us. May Allah bless us. May Allah forgive all our sin. The sin of our parents who die as a Muslim. Amin. Ya Rabbil Alamin. Wa billahi tawfiqi wal akhri da'wana. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa salam. We just have Sheikh Ali Al-Abbasi, Imam Masjid Al-Aqsa also present on the stage. May I also mention that amongst our speakers who have left but they have given their regards is Dr. Jamal Badawi of Canada, Dr. Mamdu Muhammad of USA, Dr. Lawrence Brown of USA, Brother Amar Amonet of USA, and Brother Anwar Ibrahim, the Deputy Prime Minister of Malaysia and present leader of the opposition in Malaysian Parliament. They have given their regard and the lastly we had very emotional brother Zain Bika also had left uh, he's from South Africa who has given our regards to the whole conference may I have the next speaker Sheikh Salim Al Amri from UAE present his comments to you Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our efforts. May Allah accept the efforts of the organizers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite our hearts upon the truth. Amen. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned in an authentic hadith, Al-Jama'atu Rahma wal-Furqatu Adab. Togetherness and the unity is a mercy from Allah and division and disunity is a punishment from Allah. And you have been experiencing this beautiful feeling, the feeling of brotherhood, the warmth of the brotherhood. This is because this is the barakah of the togetherness. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, remember that the unity is a mercy. So strive hard to bring and bridge the gap between the Muslims. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite the hearts of all the Muslims on the truth. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.